Hello, uh, I'm Richard Raffin. Uh, this is the first of the four-way videos in which uh, four of us, uh, myself, Sam Angelo, Mike Peace and Tomislav Tomaszek, who uh, suggested the idea, all work to the same brief. Uh, the idea is that you see four different ways of, uh, uh, from a starting point and hopefully we'll all end up with something a bit different. Uh, this first brief was uh, set by Sam and uh, we're all going to make a box, cross grain box, at least three inches diameter, two inches high and colour is optional. Well I'm not really one for uh, colouring wood too much but um, it's uh, going to be a little bit of a challenge. Uh, coloured wood I initially thought requires uh, the wood to be light so that we can put um, a uh, different range of kind of colors. Sam initially uh, was uh, idly thinking rainbows. Um, I wasn't too keen on that. Uh, but I was thinking as far as shape goes, cross grain, uh, of a long kind of tall box with a kind of nut bowl on the top with a handle. Um, I've got a sort of example here. Um, so I would have a a shape a little more like this. This is a roughed out box which I could, a roughed out cylinder which I could use. What's going to be a spatula pot and then this is a bowl I made some time ago but um, that would then sit on there as a bowl with a little handle and that could come off and you could uh, hold it and pour your nuts out and um, it's an idea I quite like the idea of uh, but the more I looked at this um, the worse it looked really. This funny little handle sticking out. I thought of having two handles coming out. I, I drew this mostly um, and that just looked a bit comical and then I thought of having four handles which uh, ones coming off the long grain here would be very fragile so if the uh, lid was dropped anyway you can guarantee it would land here not there. Um, these are fairly strong but this one would not be. Um, so um, I abandoned that idea and uh, went instead to uh, a kind of tall version here which uh, is well within my comfort zone as a shape. I've done quite a few like this um, probably with a little bit of uh, carving on it. Um, initially I was thinking of uh, some kind of colour pattern going across at an angle swirling around the piece uh, but I don't have very much wood uh, cross grain wood that kind of height um, that really is six inch bowl material and I just don't make those um, and I never really did although I've and uh, consequently I don't have any timber dry and I don't have anything roughed out apart from the cylinder you've just seen but for the cylinder I've just seen, I don't have a lid to go with it. Uh, so that kind of squashed that one. So I'm coming back to uh, a lower squatter bowl. And uh, what I have is as a piece of timber, which I know is dry. It's, it's heaven knows how old. It's been lying in somebody's barn for uh, probably 20 years. And uh, it came to my way late last year. So what I'm going to do is cut discs out of that and see what I can make with those. And I'm really thinking in terms of a fairly squat uh, base and then a rounded top which I can get my hand over. Um, or if you've got a very small hand you can kind of lift off with two hands. But a loose lid because it's cross grain and cross grain is always going to move with the seasons even if it's very stable. Now as far as the colour goes um, on this wood, uh, I've got some pretty bright yellows uh, as an option but we'll have a look at that when I see more what colour it comes about. But I'm anticipating um, this wood, which I've never worked before, I don't know anything about it, um, that uh, I anticipate it'll come up fairly dark uh, once it's got some oil on it. Um, and so a kind of nice ochre yellow might look quite nice in there as a discreet bit of uh, adornment. So next job is going to be to cut the blank. 
So the main feature of this blank is this split which comes down to there so and it goes right across the top. Uh, what I can see is what looks like a little bit of very nice kind of shimmer going right the way through it. Um, so uh, we'll do that, lower the, the guides. That's my little bit of exercise for the afternoon. Um, so I can then cut that through. So I want to get the split out. And that looks pretty good. And I'll just take the other one out as well. Right, I can still see it's just a little bit here bit up there so take about six millimeters off and what I'd like to see is a nice clean bit of wood which I do there's a slight kind of knotty thing there but that's all right oh, that's looking very nice so now a question of cutting the discs out. Uh, always pays to turn the wood over and make sure there are no nasty surprises the other side. So that's got a little bit of uh, a bit of a kind of knot or something there. So uh, that would come out probably. Uh, with the shapes I have in mind. Anyway, let's see what I can get out of this. Now, so I can get one there, which takes me out of there. So we'll just cut that. And that looks about four inches, 110 millimeters, which is uh, four and a three eighths and uh, inches. So that'll be all right. So we can get another one out of this side. A little bit of a remaining split there. But if I'm going to round the lid over, um, I can cope with that. So that will be the top. This will be the bottom. Therefore, ah, oh, I've just spotted another little split. You can hardly see it. So that's coming out now. <laughs> Right, well that puts a bit of a different aspect on things. Um, it looks horribly like another one just there. And uh, yeah, that might well be a split. Right, so I'm just going to get a smaller blank out of, or a similar size to the other one out of there. A little small one in here. Just giving myself some options here, really, in what I can do with the uh, with the lid. If it comes to it, I might have to have a much smaller lid. There we can go slightly larger. Oh, they're a bit close together, so I'll lose a little flat bit there. But now I've only got a twenty. I've only I've got the twenty millimeter blade on here, so I can't go around corners very well. Oh, it's just a bit of wood jammed in there. So. Right, so now we can uh, 
Next I will go to the drill press and sink a hole in the blanks. So each blank now has a hole in it, uh, drilled on the drill press, and that's going over some pin jaws. It's just a nice quick way, convenient way to hold a smaller blank. And you can bring the tail saw up if you want, but I um, don't normally bother. And uh, this is uh, a quite a short now half inch spindle gouge, and people always want to know the bevel, as I've just measured, it's about 40 degrees. This is when I discover how the wood's going to work. That's cutting, uh, because it's not fantastic on the end grain, um, which means we'll probably be scraping the fair bit of sanding and try a finer cut. That's a little shaving just off, just to the left of the nose of the tool. Don't go racing off the end, that will just chip it. And try one back the other way so you can see what's happening. Right, not very nice up on the end grain. And if it's not very nice there, it won't be very nice on the other side as well. It's not quite so bad, but anyway, so I need to do all four of those. So in the second blank, um, that little hole which I'd spotted earlier um, turned out to be a little bit bigger and uh, requires a dental pick just to find out how far down it goes really. And I always like to get rid of everything I don't want in the final piece early on. So that marks the top of it. And uh, just take a little cut in from here and get it out of the way. And I should have marked where to look for it, which is uh, just there. Uh, but it's, it's all but gone, so that'll be okay. So, on with the rest. So, this has given me uh, four blanks. Uh, this one has a little bit of figure just there. Uh, so now it's starting to look really at uh, lids and bases. So, um, if I put that on on that, I'm thinking in terms of a base, kind of tape it in. Uh, that's probably bigger than I need. So i try that one, which I think will be about the right size. And if it isn't, I, I've then got the bigger one spare. Um, if I do that one, that'll be a much more enclosed form and a totally different kind of shape, um, which I don't think I want to pursue this time. So I'll go with shaping um, this one first. So... Uh, Ah, oh, what I hadn't thought of. Um, that's more likely to be a lid um, because it's got a big hole in the bottom, so that's not so good for a base. Um, so in which case, that we're now looking at that way up. Uh, I wasn't thinking about that, was I? I'll go with those. Oops. Doesn't really matter too much. I should go with that one, I think. So, the base gets done first. Now I've established the diamond at the top. So that will go back on the chuck and get shaped up. So, first thing is to get the bottom flat. And I'm going to grip this. Um, 
with uh, the jaws wide open so there will be marks on this and I'll turn that off uh, at the end. This is the uh, skewed shear screw actually tilted on its side or use flat rather. Proving to be quite a hard, dusty wood, and uh, well, slightly concave. I have a little niche taken out of the corner because this side's rounded, so you can just ease that in. A little bit of decoration on the bottom. Now, all I need really is this running true, which it, it is pretty well. And then this is going to be narrowing to the top. So finger underneath the rest, so when I push the tool forward. I've got more control and it's the hands over the top. Oh, it's quite hard. Now I reckon getting a smooth surface on this might be quite difficult. Off the tool. And uh, so for that reason I'm beginning to think in terms of, uh, of just having a smooth line, no real detail, a bit of chatter mark there, so it's going a bit hard. So I'll turn that round. This is now going into step jaws. back and now I'm going to be rechucking it so I'll sand the bottom later although I had actually just forgotten about that uh, I was thinking about where to move the camera so I'm going to take another cut up the outside first and to do that I'm going to use uh, the quarter inch deep fluted bowl gouge so I think I'll get a better cut off that really of course the the curves tighter on the nose Just go slowly and steadily and hope there's a better cut. Still picking up a little bit in the end grain there. Still just have to do, we'll sand it. Um, another problem which might be arising is that with um, very hard grain sometimes sanding with the friction built up with sanding that can split the end grain. Little micro splits, very irritating. Right, we'll drill a depth hole. Just going to use a 3 8 ball guard for that. And I need to get the tailstock out of the way. Ah, oh, down to the end of the flute. Good. So if you're going to drill with the depth gauge over the um, spindle gouge, you really need a long bevel and a pretty full curve on the uh, on the wings. Not something you can do on a jig generally, I think. So I'll rough this out with the three eighths deep fluted bowl gouge.
have my hand over the top and if I did that you wouldn't be able to see almost down there just need to move the dust hood out of the way So that's the bulk of it out, I suppose, in about five cuts. Um, and then I've got the three quarter inch uh, square end scraper, which just feels a little bit like it could do with a bit of a hone. we are down in there. Well that's turning quite nicely on the end on the bottom on the flat. Sounds about right. Oh yes more than right. So I've got about um, less than the flange I have here so it's about where the jaws are so which measures Six millimeters, no, five millimeters, so it's just under a quarter of an inch. Yeah, it's a bit too accurate, straight up. Right, so no margin for error. Well, I have got margin for error, I've got another blank. So I can't see what you can see in there, but I can see what's happening over at about four o'clock. Just easing the handle away so I get a bit of a curve on the inside. As expected that's not a particularly good cut down the inside so I should be able to improve that if it didn't just get stuck in there with um, 120 grit or even 80 um, but I will have a go with the uh, I've got a detail gouge here which is a very shallow spindle gouge fairly long bevel and uh, so start on its side roll it very slightly anti-clockwise and just go steadily and firmly down the uh, down the slope and try not to get in the way of the camera I'm gonna have to get in the way of the camera to start the cut vibration at the end is really because I'm not over the tool enough. I've really got to reach right over so I'm going to be blocking away. I need to be right over. Right, there's a teeny little ridge there. So I need to just get the tool in. And now I can see where it is looking across at the other side. Right, and that is now going to get 120 grit. wasn't uh, quite the task that I thought it would be uh, which is a relief um, I've gone down to 320 which is about 
all I normally go down to and I'm now going to use uh, onto this uh, a bit of bald linseed inside and uh, and some uh, beeswax which is my normal finish and I was expecting this to come out quite a lot blacker but it's going to be uh, quite pink although it'll darken in the long run um, and I don't think I'm going to be putting any colour on the base I'm just going to be doing it on the lid if there is any so that's the that's the oil on and uh, a bit of beeswax on top in my other videos, several of you commented on um, or wanted to know whether I put the oil or the wax on first and it rather depends um, I'm rather kind of lax around I suppose finishing um, the idea is to get the oil and the wax mixed in and then melted in to the wood so they can really go on in either order when it comes to it well, a very dense wood like this, a good chance I don't really need to have the um, to have the oil. This is the sock, which is impregnated with wax. So that gives a pretty nice finish, and then son of sock, which is slightly less wax in it. Uh, gets to take off the surplus and starts to build and it in its turn will become the waxy sock right so that's that uh, inside done the outside I need to do the uh, do the bottom and uh, deal with that bit and this will probably go over the jaw shoulders especially if I wound it the right way yep, that'll go in nicely and so the bearing surface is the fullness of the curve up there and it won't really leave a bruise which you'll notice right so now if you wanted to bring the tailstock up in this situation uh, you'd want also to bring up something solid like a disc to put the tailstock um, uh, to bring the tailstock up to and then you've got plenty of support for the bottom and no nasty little hole from the cone in the center so this one um, I've got teeth marks to get rid of so that's the first thing to do 3-8 spindle gouge is my weapon of choice for this kind of thing ridge there so I don't want to go off into space and tear the grain that feels smooth no sign of teeth marks right so I'm now just going to round over this little shoulder in fact both shoulders and just leave a little kind of wide base there might just put a little bit of a chamfer on it So there's a nice clean cut there, so that's good. Just use the sock this time. Okay, plenty of wax on it going into the wood. We'll go all the way up to the top. So 
So that is the base done. So here's my finished uh, base and this is the lid I had in mind or the piece of wood I had in mind for the lid but it's not quite big enough uh, to make an overfitting lid so uh, my error was not cutting this in at a steep enough angle so um, I could just make another base because I've got this blank here um, but I'm going to use it for the lid and we'll, I'll just live with my decision. Um, Normally I like a lid which is slightly smaller than the base, uh, but in this case it might even be slightly bigger. Um, we'll just see how we go, but what I have in mind is a, uh, a bowl about half the height, which is half this blank. So there's going to be an awful lot of this blank wasted, um, so I don't think it'll be an easy piece to part off, so it'll, it'll just be wasted wood. So the blank is going into the uh, step jaws. And just flatten off the rim first and then uh, get the diameter for the base. I thought I might do the diameter for the base now. Um, then I've got the divider set. So this is now going outside this lid. So just Hold the point against the thumb, can't watch both points at once. That should do it. So there's going to be a slightly loose lid anyway. And even if it ended up as a jewellery box, it's loose lid is probably better for that kind of thing too. <laughs> so we'll just uh, smooth that off with the uh, spindle gouge again to use the wing of the tool just to screw that up. I'm not feeling altogether comfortable with that. I'm going to change the chuck. Um, it's gripped on a nice wide diameter, but just don't know why it was rattling a bit. But I'm going to feel more comfortable using the expanding collet uh, and that'll be turned away anyway so I suppose a nice hole there that'll save me a bit of work won't it yep, not in tight uh, straight rather because I didn't hold it up straight against the jaws better Oh, looking for the half inch spindle gouge again. Now that's the tool tilted over an angle. You build that in, bring that in, flute up, it's going to be over your shoulder. That's the blank, not the tool. Now this is the diameter. There. And we'll just cut that in and see what it looks like. Uh, do that with a little uh, the three eighths deep through the gouge. Right, so that just needs to be a little bit wider but that's actually looking quite nice so what I'm going to do is make a little bowl inside that it's more of a dish really I'll use the same three it's a uh, uh, quarter inch uh, bowl guard. really designed for that kind of a cut so I'll use the uh, half inch spindle gouge and that's got a much broader fuller wing
I'm just going to come in. What I want to do with the rim is to round it over. Three eighths spindle, uh, spindle gouge. Round it over that way. So what I'm going to want is a little, uh, a little undercut, rounded undercut rim. I'm going to get in there with the, uh, the scraper. And get in with the, you know, there's not quite enough curve on that, so I need to find myself you know, more of a bowl scraper. This one is more like it, it's a one inch. Really quite tricky just getting in under there. Do have another tool for that? I've forgotten about. Uh, I hardly ever use this tool, which is a, uh, a skewed scraper going in the other direction. And go into there. Now I've got a slight ridge just there, which I want to get rid of. Do that by tilting this tool up on edge. This is a shear scraper. Tilt it up on edge and just shear scrape into the middle. I've got to be terribly careful about catching the upper point up there. But like that. I wasn't intending to give you uh, an example there. Deep enough for a few nuts, probably. Now, uh, to get back in under there, uh, I'm going to use a skew chisel. I've got one which uh, it's got quite a good radius on it, so it's really being like a negative rake scraper, which is. Not something I ever use normally. It's the nearest I get to a negative rate scraper. I've just realised I haven't had my microphone plugged in, so. The sound has suddenly improved. Sorry about that. Now I want to round that over, I'm going to use the wing of the skew, the bevel side rather. I just want to round that over, get rid of any little lines which I can see over there. Oh dear dear dear. I'm trying to keep out of your way and I can't really see what I'm doing. Not directly, I'm watching over the other side. Now I am going to block it here. Now I'm going to start shaping the outside using uh, use a three eighths deep fluted gouge, finger underneath the rest, and really just pushing the tool in. Try and avoid cutting against the grain, but uh, in this situation, very difficult. So, what I want to do at this stage is set up the general curve 
and then I'll match it when I take the bulk of this off uh, shortly. Let's take a little bit more of this round. Right, and I'll sand that in with the 120 from previous experience. You just want to round, round the rim over stage. I mentioned 360 earlier on, but in fact, I don't think I've been any finer than the blue. Right, so that's that done, and the uh, I now need to expand jaws inside that, and uh, then I can take the top off. In fact, while I'm at it here, I can probably take a lot of that bulk from here. It might be just a bit easier. There's a better grip. So using the right wing of the, the guard. It's got a double bowl. I hope that's going to do the job. If it doesn't, I'm in trouble. Getting close. Ah, oh, thank goodness. Now it might be prudent just to bring up the tail centre here. Just in case it feels like coming loose. Right, I'm going to be using the uh, uh, a quarter inch spindle gouge again. against the grain. So it uh, should really be cutting the other way to get a nice clean surface. Now get in there tight. I'm going to use the spindle guard. It's got a slightly longer bevel. Put it tighter. Just about right, which means I don't want to go any thinner. Okay, grains running across. And just snap that off. OK, 
looking a shade clunky. I can take some out of that area. Got the right thickness in there. Didn't need much off, just there. Now, torn grain there, and probably around here. No, it's not too bad there, but we'll, uh, we, I will take a shear cut with the quarter inch bowl guard. It's got a fairly steep right wing, so uh, gives me a nice angle of attack here. If I had a longer bevel, I'd be way over there somewhere. Lost it a little bit. Well, maybe not. So there's a hint, a hint of an oji there, and uh, that might actually look quite good. How does it feel? Take a little bit more out of that. I quite like that as a little OG. So I think I'll just take that out a little bit. Yeah. And this time I'm going to do that with a shear scraper. Oh, feels a lot better. Slight kind of lump up there. Well, I think that's going to look all right. And the next thing to consider is yeah, definitely looking a bit better. I could even have a kind of cove there. I've got the wood for it. Right. Taking it down a bit further. Bit of commitment in with the gouge. <laughs> Clean it up with a shear scrape. So if nothing happens, don't get a bit of dust easily. You don't push the tool in harder, you go to the grinder or hone it. A hint of that brittle sound in there, getting thin enough. Now, Sam, Sam's project suggested we could have a bit of colour. You know, we really want to try that. So it's a question. I'm going to put some dots of colour around it. Very random. Um, but I need a line. So oh, a slight bump there. Um, I need a line so I know where to make the holes. So do I want it there, and there, yep, 
I think I'll just go for that. So my lines are going to go, in fact I might have two lines and I can work in between. And I'm going to be using a Dremel when I find it. And the idea is going to be just, I'm just going to do a series of marks in, now do I want them that way or that way? Uh, In that way, I think. Oops, nothing to do with that. So I'm just, this is definitely random. On a bigger scale, if you mess it up, you can um, take those away and do another lot. Now, those are going to get filled with epoxy and left to sit overnight, and then I'll sand them uh, in the morning. So, very irritatingly, last night uh, I managed to take two photos rather than a video. Uh, I forgot to check that the video was running. Anyway, uh, what I did was mix. Uh, these pigments, um, this is uh, cadmium yellow which is really quite dangerous stuff and some other pigment which I was given a while back um, to make the kind of mustardy colour here. Um, so that was with five minute epoxy and this one I go back on the lathe and, uh, and be trued up. So I'm going to do this with a, uh, just try scraping it I think, um, I've already honed up the um, shear scraper for this. Just going to shear scrape it with a tool up on edge. just slightly less aggressive. That's oh, quite a bit to come off. Maybe we'll do it with the gouge. That's the three at spindle gouge. The basically shear scraping as well just with the uh, the wing of the tool. pencil lines oh, I'm just going to hit that with uh, heavy sanding so this will be the 120 
problems when you're hand sanding is that the wood's barely moving in the middle so it's very easy to develop a little lump which you can barely feel uh, but the light often catches it so uh, to get rid of that it pays to stop the lathe and just return it turn it by hand so every push you go across center and that way you keep a nice dome 3 sander will just take away any swell marks. Uh, we'll just put wax on this. I'm beginning to wish I put a bit of sparkle into it or something. Too late now. <laughs> 